So hi, welcome to the Good Ads Matter Roundtable, Season 1. Uh, I'm Ashim Aluwali, I'm a director and I'm actually very, very happy to do this today. Um, I think I've worked with almost everyone here, or we're already friends, so this is going to be a lot of fun, I think. So today we're talking to some of the most talented cinematographers uh, working in India. And I really probably don't need to introduce anyone, but since I've been told to, I will. Um, so we start with Bose, uh, who is a graduate of the Film Television Institute of Tamil Nadu, very well-known name in the industry. Uh, he seamlessly navigates between commercials, feature films, and has worked with some of the biggest stars in the industry, who really uh, all love the way he lights them, apparently, <laughs> I've heard. Um, Priya, uh, her work spans Hindi, Tamil, Telugu cinema, and um, she's been a huge inspiration. I've known her actually the longest at this table, and she's been a huge inspiration for a whole generation of uh, younger DOPs. She's paved the way to, for, for women to work in what was traditionally a very male-dominated industry. And um, she's also a great uh, underwater cinematographer, so very wi wide range of skills. Rubais, uh, if you remember the re recent cred ad with uh, Raja Muli and uh, David Warner, uh, He's been doing some amazing work, very, very exciting work, and representing a, a younger generation of DOPs at this table. Really happy to have Rubias with us. Tapan, greatly talented, very good with understanding the narrative before he gets into, into a project. Uh, has a very fresh and unique eye and uh, has been working all over the world. We've recently worked together on Class, which is a series for Netflix. Big bunch of brands, directors, agencies, all uh, really working with Tapan right now. We should all know him if we don't already. Karthik. Of course, needs no real introduction, but I will. Uh, grew up actually with a very different background, a, a family of accomplished musicians. Started with, in a household where there was a lot of Karnataka music, which I think is very interesting from a background point of view, um, which shaped his artistic vision. He's brought uh, his unique uh, eye to 12 features, both Indian and international, and has crafted uh, amazing visuals for over 450 commercials and countless short films. Then we have K.U. Monan who graduated from FTI with a, with a shining career spanning over three decades. He's contributed really? skills to numerous features and commercials. And he also looks suspiciously like my brother, which is never a bad thing, <laughs> I think. Uh, shot Andadun, Dawn, Talash, um, and we've done two features together and has an amazing portfolio of work. And then, of course, Anuj has a diverse background. He directs, he's a DOP. Uh, he's done a lot of beauty and fashion, long format. And he's known for lots of high and slick ads. So Anuj is the man behind a lot of things that you've probably already seen, and uh, we all love Anuj. So that's, that's the intro. Um, starting, at least since I'm a director, I think I'm going to start with a question which is sort of close to sort of where I come from. And starting with a quote actually that Bose made in a 2017 interview about how a director and cameraman are like husband and wife, right? And I think this is a very interesting take because we often are grouped together. So I think the question really is, how do you find, and anyone can answer this, how do you find a balance between the script, the director's approach, and your own vision, right? So whose voice is louder and holds the most power? And what I really mean by this is when you're on set, this decision-making hierarchy, is this something that you have to adjust to? I mean, I'm always fascinated by that. What, what about difficult directors? What about incompetent directors? How do you work with someone that is guiding that ship when you have to be on set? And, any kind of answer is, is great, honestly. Well, I guess I can start. Uh, you can say that the producer is the priest, the Bible is the PPM deck, and then you have the husband and the wife getting married. I mean, these days with advertising and with creative directors getting very involved, I feel like there's always this third person um, that has a say in a lot of the shoots these days. Um, so we get storyboards exact that we need to copy these days. We get lighting, you know, sort of references. So. I guess like in advertising, the creativity is kind of limited to the kind of PPM deck that you get these days. It also obviously comes down to the personality of the director on how the shoot will end up in terms of, you know, the, uh, the kind of experience of the process. But I have noticed that these days that the creative director is the one that actually takes the, the, the main call most of the time is between the director and the creative director. And the DP is executing that more than like, you know, getting involved in the creative vision of the, of the commercial or that sort of an ad. Uh, but yeah, there are some people that you get along with and some you don't. But being DOPs and in an ad working with eight different people every month, uh, you kind of get used to being a people's person and, and, and navigating your way through directors because on a daily set, other than our own crew, we end up meeting new crew and new directors and new producers every second or third day. So you kind of have to have some tough skin to kind of navigate that, I guess. 
See, I can give you an uh, analogy. As I've said this before, when sometimes I go into these film schools to take some classes, and I want to take it off from how you said that Tapan gets into the narrative. So I have a very simple way of explaining this. I always tell that a director is somebody who comes to you with a piece of cloth, and he knows whether he wants a kurta out of it or whether he wants a shirt out of it. And as a cinematographer, your job is to understand that he wants a kurta or a shirt. And when you get along very well, then you end up making a kurta. Now, this is where the cinematographer comes in. Abhi, isme aapko lal button chahiye, nila button chahiye, lapel chahiye. You can embellish that, but in essence, you have to kind of understand what he wants. And that 99% out of 100, you do end up understanding the person. Now, what Anuj is saying, sometimes it doesn't hit the mark because there may be various cooks, and it is the saying. You know, too many cooks spoil the broth. But Somewhere, when we have all done long formats, we understand that there is a certain magic to understanding the vision of the director, and then reaching there. You know, and then there is a whole creative process. Yeah, shirt, lal hoga, nila hoga, pila hoga, white hoga. But the point is that you got to understand where he's coming from. You know, and I feel that is a nice way to kind of define what you were saying. Like there is a marriage between a, a director and a DOP. So. I think it 99% you do end up understanding the person, and if you understand the person, I think we've all reached a stage where I think today we are trying to enjoy the day. You know, if you enjoy the day, irrespective of the final result, then I think you've got a good thing going. Yeah, I I I feel that as a cinematographer, you're you have to mold yourself according to who the director is. After after spending many years. Or whatever I have um, doing long format and ads and stuff. I have found that for me, at least, it's the director's vision that matters the most. When it comes to commercials, of course, like he said, there is the creative director's vision also. Client, the end of the day. Client, yeah. end of the day, because they are paying the they are the ones who are paying the money, right? But you have to mold yourself according to what the director wants. If it's in a feature, then it will be. I think that okay, this is what the director wants. This is what I'm going to try and give. I can I can probably suggest that this might not work, but in the end of the day, if that is what he or she wants, then that's what we have to do. Because I've learned it the hard way. Uh, because there was a time where I was shooting a feature, and then I was we were doing we were doing shots, and then um, the director told me, uh, "No, you know what? Let's let's put the camera down here, and we shoot that." And then in my I had just come back from film school from the US. Shooting this in when I'm like gung ho, I said that no, it doesn't work, and and he said that no, why? I want that shot. I said no, it won't work, and then I sulked. Of course, I mean we shot that, and then after that I saw the shot when the final film came out. I saw the shot; it didn't make any difference. The story went on. Right. There was no difference. The story was great. The film did very well, but the director didn't work with me again. Right. Right. For a, for a few years. So the question is whether. What point do you want to? Where do you want to go? And do you want to spoil a relationship like that? Because at the, up till that point, not that the relationship got spoiled, but it's always yeah. You have to approach the other person differently. Like if, if there's a person who says that okay, he doesn't, he or she doesn't know about lensing, which I've worked with many directors like that, but they are fabulous with performance. There has to be a, a reason why they are director, and there 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 is a reason why we are also DP. So if if a person comes to you, then it's I look at it as my job to get their vision right. So if I have to, I have to. If they don't know what lens is, I ask them, okay, what is the, what is the? Are you looking at it as a close? Are you looking at it as a wide? What is there in your head? And then, then you mold it accordingly, you know. Also, like regarding, I am from advertising. I used to work in as a, in the agency as an art director. So I kind of know a little bit of that side also because when the creative directors come, it is their baby, you know. They are all like thinking. You know what's happening, what's happening, and stuff. But you have to. If what is it that they want? There was there was a time point in time where I used to sometimes ask that, "Do you need this kind of a shot?" Right. Which very soon I stopped asking. Mm. Also because I I directed three commercials. After that I stopped asking any of these questions because there are so many people sitting on a director's yeah. head. That one there is no reason for you to ask that question. You know it's not it's not necessary. And then you you can ask on the side or something. Ki, hmm. But at the same time, now I always tell people that if the director wants the shot, I'll just give the shot. You know, when I was doing a feature, there is a producer who came up to me and asked me. He told me, you know what? There are too many shots. You have to tell the director to cut those shots. 
I told them I cannot tell him to mm. cut shots because it is not my job. Yeah. There are only I believe that there are only two people who can tell the director to cut shots. One is the AD, the first AD, and the producer. Producer. If he tells me let's shoot from there, I'll be more even more excited, and I'll probably shoot from the other side. Yeah. So, as long as it works, and I think also like you know the edit, you go, God knows how the edit is going to work. Sometimes your edit can completely change the script. So like just adding a simple small shot would just change the entire story and take it somewhere else. Yeah. So, talking about. um as you were saying about the marriage taking the analogy of marriage i think the first few dates with a new director are very important <laughs> yeah. because that's when you actually understand it's not even about discussing the script at that point it's just what do you like what kind <coughs> of stuff gets you excited whether it's not even about a film it's about uh, music or just understand what are the sensibilities right. and then try and actually hone yourself within that sometimes it works and you know sometimes it doesn't yeah. but i think that's really important before you even get down to script and all of that to figure out whether that you can actually come up to a point where you both can travel in that journey together right. i find that really important that the initial speed dating <laughs> pretty much pretty much yeah. yeah and you'll know pretty soon in the <laughs> yeah. in the first few dates whether you can actually get engaged or not <laughs> yeah yeah shaadi hoga ki shaadi hoga ki that's 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 when you do a do a to a feature no yeah but what about when you do a commercial actually speed date that's, that's a, like that's like speed date now that's like you have to <laughs> get into bed <laughs> one copy to figure out that's like you get into bed immediately and then next morning realize whether it was a good idea or not <laughs> <laughs> like like priya said like it's very important that the vibe there has to be a vibe it's also actually which works both ways right mm yeah of if, course if 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 there's someone who's working with you for the first time you also got to realize that oh that person's also kind of you know checking you out like you know my my work work must be great but if i'm i act like uh, shit on set then it's like no point you know they're not going to call me back again there's no point it is like you know you ha- you are like you are figuring each other out and then you are like you have to put in your task about what what music do you like what is this any art any any kind of references mm. that you you put out mm. there if there is something that will catch right you throw the but, fishing line and then something what i feel is like uh, when you when you're working with a director like the, you when you don't agree each other no i think it's a, it's actually it's very positive you know sometimes like uh, so, yeah. because the thing is like uh, somebody comes and tells you something or uh, uh, and uh, you approach in a totally different way actually so there is a kind of an idea two ideas are clashing actually two approaches actually like the same same script the same idea but two people are thinking in a very different fashion actually it sometimes it works out in even better actually you know like anywhere actually in any field like people don't like even everybody has their own individuality and uh, and they think differently so that works in in cinema as well actually like when you do a commercial also see like you get a storyboard like uh, who follows a storyboard i don't follow a storyboard at all okay. actually so the storyboard is a, just a kind of a reference actually so you you put your interpretation actually like what you think like even the director doesn't know actually what it is the director will give you lot of lot of ideas actually like the basic thing but you interpret in in, yeah. in your own fashion and that is that is you that is your individuality you know that is what a cinematographer is to do so like that not clashing and everything is like it's part and parcel of the game actually you know like uh, the the work no, but many times this clash actually works like how mohan yeah. sir is yeah, saying yeah, because yeah, you know, yeah. over time we've all been kind of stereotyped into our own molds you know like yeah. you know uh, anuj is known for his color you're known for your mood i'm known for speed and this portraiture lighting and sometimes you are already knowing that they called you for this you know they didn't call me because i'm going to light like tapan so yeah. you are anyway you know especially in advertising this is like very mm. true when it comes to advertising yeah. so you're yeah. being called because you're doing this and many a times if you're there and you're open to it and many a times a director says that listen can we do this then you actually end up learning something mm. that day because it is out of your comfort yeah. zone and those are the best days actually yeah yeah, yeah. No? yeah. no i think creative conflicts are very important you have to no that's yeah. very productive you know? actually yeah, yeah. actually that is better you know rather than like whatever you say like whatever the, the director say whatever you give no if the director says oh wow fantastic that you know like that actually yeah, yeah. yeah it's very worrying <laughs> yeah it's very worrying that makes you yeah. like like because this is like i think i prefer a director who actually pushes just me. keeps yeah yeah keep like no yeah it's yeah. not working actually this is not working actually let's try something else you know 
like uh, that kind of a thing is like much more i think in, then your brain also started like get, get yeah. getting stimulated you know yeah. so i think is something a relationship actually like uh, yeah if it if if in in a way if it doesn't work no like yeah. to to individual actually the, the, yeah. the, the product is better yeah. you know? <laughs> that's that's why i said it's a husband wife i didn't say a mistress and a <laughs> 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 so there will be a conflict I mean, also, you know, you, I think as a cinematographer, at least for advertising, you no, know, like in cinematographers, was like, you know, you know the brand also you're working for. So sometimes what happens is that, you know, you also like we said, this, you meet a director who probably has not worked on that brand, so you know what brand philosophy. So as a cinematographer, advertising specifically, you also should also know, I think, get to know the brand philosophy, what kind of thing they follow. You know, you cannot say probably, you know, shoot in a certain brand in a certain way. So that kind of help helps also because when you meet a director who probably. is doing for the first time you know he might be wanting to do a lot of things you know that's what happens also with younger people they want a lot of things but it may not work so then you know you do a balance between both like you know obviously you know the way you say it or way you handle it that's matters a lot and again like you how you say taking from your point yeah a lot of times a creative director you know gets in and talks about it working for so yeah, long for an hour you know, the creative director must have worked for like 6 yeah. months <coughs> and got it approved yeah. and we go for 3 yeah. days and I act like yeah. we know everything then that's a little <laughs> problem But as a cinema, I think you also got to balance agency, even director here. You know, a client also sometimes. You know, you get into the conversation. You know that where you know because the director wants certain thing. Maybe they will not go with the brand, or maybe creative director is not you know into it. Like you know, mostly it's also with got to do with mostly you know the brightness. For me, it's mostly the brightness and dark. How you yeah. so <laughs> usually what you land up doing is that you just I land up doing you know, what is your you know show me some paintings or show me some photograph which is for you. bright or dark and that way you can understand a person you know what's yeah. like what's the level of brightness or darkness he like to prefer like a lot of times happen with me that well, I like to shoot very dark but when i get this photograph he likes it's like quite bright for me yeah. so it's like so it's like you know that's so you know that yeah. kind of do a balance both and both it's subjective the thing is that i think some of the best dops that i've seen at least that i've worked with are very adaptive in the sense that they're already preempting So, for example, you I worked with younger DOPs, and I say, "Oh, I want it really moody," and then they light it really moody, and now the agency guy says, "Boss, this is really dark. Do we get to see the guy's face?" And I say, "You know, they're getting a bit stressed. Can you change the lighting?" And they haven't actually preempted it, and then they're freaking out because they're like, "Oh man, now I don't have a place to put this light. I haven't thought it through." And I found working with many of you guys and just seeing what we're saying right now is that there's a kind of flexibility where you already know you're pushing it, but if someone says, "Okay, you know what?" get that fill going Back, you've yeah. got yeah. that fill already yeah. there you got the bounce board ready you know there's that flexibility so actually the next question really is other than obviously light and framing and camera and all of the sort of technicalities of the dop's world what do you think a skill i mean if you just had to think of one skill or a couple of skills that a dop or a cinematographer needs to have independent of that like an interpersonal skill or whatever is there something you could think of that would be a skill that's non camera oriented that people you need to have yeah people, people management, management. Yeah, undoubtedly yeah. yeah leadership as well suddenly you see a lot, lot of faces looking at you and like oh man i need to yeah. make yeah. that decision yeah. Mm. yeah i guess like directors nowadays would would rather work with a 7 on 10 and an 8 on 10 person as long as they get along with them i feel these days the choices are made behind like you said having a good time on set enjoying the process and mm. having a good shoot Right. So, like, if you're an asshole, sorry if I can uh, yeah. use that. Language. We can actually swear. I check. We can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, no one wants to work with an asshole. You know <laughs> what right. I mean? So if if you can be good at what you do, but be someone that you can get along with the director and the producer, just be uh, easy to work with right. and, yeah. and still deliver something. And yeah, uh, being able to tell yourself that this is the limitation of the project because a lot of times. I find myself getting a bit crabby or or annoying when you're not getting what you want as a requirement or whatever that is to you know to deliver something. Once you tell yourself that this is the means of the ad, this is the budget that we have. Once you get over that, do your best and just be a fun or easy person to get along with. You'll probably end up getting more work, I think, these days. Other than yes, uh, people management, leadership skills. That is that is a known. I think also ability not to crumble when light is going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think For sure. That's a good one. You know, because <laughs> the DP, the DPs, we have like literally fifty people under us on an average, or like forty people if you consider lighting, grip, camera, uh, you know, the attendance, all of that stuff. So we kind of run quite the largest team on set. So I guess uh, even for your team, when you're someone, when you're a DP, that. they don't look at you as this annoying dp then they also tend to work better for you so i guess being that is 
a lot of DP should work on. It's not a, there's no greater joy than having a DP already thought through that the light's falling and they've already exactly. got the lights in the truck. Yeah. Yeah. And you say, what do you do? And they're like, no, no, don't worry. We have it. It's okay. We're good. Right? We can do these close-ups <laughs> yeah. now. That's, that's a relief. Can, oh, I, can I add? To yeah, just, just one, I think um, uh, my wife, she's a director. So, you know, there's one thing that she says is that as a DP, you might be a good DP, but how are you on the days that, how are you on your bad days? Mm. Mm. Yeah. That is what, that's what defines you, right? Yeah. You might be good on, like, you might be great or whatever, but if, if there's a really bad day, mm. how are you on that day? Absolutely. So, because if you, if you act like crap, <laughs> act like crap and start like yeah, shouting, it's, every, it's going to throw everyone yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to throw everyone off. The director will like, you know, you can't keep shouting at people and there are times where we have all, I think we, all of us on this table have been pushed to a point where we do lose it. But how quickly do you come back? So that is, I think... I totally agree. I think the DOP is kind of the heart of the, of the shoot. When, when that goes off, you start feeling like the tension everywhere, really. So it's, I always am amazed at how calm DOPs are because directors are not very calm. So it's... It's quite an amazing skill. I wanted to ask you actually, you know, since you guys have all shot so much diverse stuff, what's the one thing, and maybe we can just go across, just out of curiosity, what's the one thing that you really dislike shooting in terms of, I don't know, it could be somebody who doesn't like doing auto or someone, I, I, it could be anything. I'm just curious if you've ever thought about that. The one thing that you get a job and you're like, uh, you know, maybe not this, but I'll take it. I've learned, I've shot, I don't like doing hair commercials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same here, uh, same here. Even yeah. I know no, how I not, can do it very not, well, I but have, I don't like it. I have, it's not, I don't like it. It's not because it's a bad thing to do. Yeah. But it's not, it's not something that interests me. Got it. I have, uh, when I was approached by someone to do a hair commercial, there's a director who had come from outside. She was directing and I said that I've never shot a hair commercial. She said, don't worry. I'll tell you how to do it. Right. I did those two shoots purely out of just trying to learn as to what, how do you, because I always try and figure, I couldn't figure out how do they light hair and the face right. both at the same time. It's a skill. It's a skill of a different totally. level, which I think what I've, what I've come to understand is that I don't enjoy it. Right. So there That's is no point that. when, if anyone comes to approaches me for a hair commercials and I said, I, because I want to be doing justice to that, right? Correct. And to myself yeah. more than anything else. So I would say, Hair commercials, I can't. Beauty, yes, because there is, you know, you can play around, you can do something. But again, there's like lots of different things. But hair commercial, I'm not good at it. I think for I me, think. Product, okay. product shots. Right? Product shots? Oh, I hate mm. it. Mm. I like, it's just, you need lots of patience for it. Oh, I love it. Because of commercials, you know, because, no, coming from advertising. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. looking at it as an art director, right? So I was like one highlight on that, <laughs> one, one spoke of the wheel or something like that. It all comes from there, but I guess. Also, everything looks pretty when you're short shooting on Phantom. You know? Like going, you, know? you can just watch it for like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> three minutes. You guys, anything? Actually, actually, hair, you know. And it's funny, hair? I've shot a lot of hair commercials. Mm. And I realized at one point that the, you can do it well. But at the end, like I wasn't feeling that joy from that, which other people were like just going nuts with. Oh mm. my God, look at that. And I was like, I feel actually nothing towards it. Mm. So you can do it well technically, mm. but it wasn't giving, it doesn't give me anything back. Right. So yeah. it's automobile literally drives Auto. me crazy. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's really uh, something that you need to get a knack of. I do, I do love enjoying product, but cars and bikes, that takes a lot to get right, I feel, in... in I have, I have issues with all this fairness, fairness thing. Stuff. That's also my politics yeah. and whatever. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. separate yeah. thing. And I don't know if I'm good at it also. But, so. I, but I never shot fairness. Even though as a even policy also. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's, even, even, like, that's not my politics. But, yeah. anymore, but yeah, glow, glow. Glow and glow, but still. I think so. most of the, uh, the sort of marketing behind the what they used to be fairness is now actually all gone. It's all now glow and they, they try to be... The language has changed. The language has yeah, changed a little bit because right. everyone's doesn't very Doesn't take much woke. to figure out. But it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty the, much it's the, the same It's pretty thing. much the same. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. nothing. Is. Like only... Yeah. But the thing is, once everyone goes away from that, being someone that shoots a lot of beauty, the thing is, you, you're okay with makeup, right? So, I mean, if it's not marketed as a fairness product, it's a part of something yeah, yeah, that's yeah. makeup. Because like earlier, it would be woman goes, does not get married, uses fair and lovely, gets married, doesn't get college admission, uses it, gets admission. So now at least it changes as a part of like a beauty Success regime or something like that. Success is not linked to fairness. Yeah, I think it's, that's it's the, how you market the, yeah. it. 
and yeah there have been times where even i have rejected those commercials because you read the script and you're just like in today's yeah, world you know that, <laughs> yeah. that's not okay uh, but yeah the, with, with everyone being a little bit more woke and them changing i guess right now it kind of changes the idea behind that but anything you don't enjoy slowly i have to make this realization that all of them have rejected hair and beauty and therefore i'm the only one who's ended up shooting <laughs> <laughs> so that's great that's why Thanks we to all of them <laughs> reject <laughs> beauty <laughs> beauty is okay beauty is okay i actually shot hair you know i shot couple of hair commercials i don't mind it it's just that you know it's i shot to- twice one got rejected <laughs> so, so let me ask you then what do you not like what do you not enjoy shooting no actually i think i i enjoy shooting everything it's just that uh, intrinsically i i i am a little bit of a speed gun mm. so the only time when uh, i kind of uh, start getting maybe jittery in my seat is maybe when i'm shooting with babies because mm. there's something Children. that you have to understand about the kid and you mm. have to be patient and you know and if especially you're used to shooting fast and you're all the time on the ball then when you come to a children shoot or a, like really like and you can't really say anything like what do you tell a 3 year old or a 4 year old so you have to be with the process you have to wait the process mm. and what's happening more and more is they take up these shoots but then they also don't want to give the baby time or you know right. and you still have to finish it right. in, by 9 no o'clock 9 o'clock exactly. to finish but the baby you can't do anything about right. it right so those are shoots where you feel kind of cheating the baby also and you cheat yourself also so maybe that's the only one that probably i feel ki yaar it shouldn't be like this that's the only one otherwise i am happy to shoot anything and keep rejecting all your stuff so i keep shooting <laughs> <laughs> so actually it's funny because i've had this realization you know because i've been doing stuff when prior to when i started out everyone is doing product well, you didn't you didn't add you had to shoot a product there was no 3d guy that generating the product right so it's something that i forgot because i was on a shoot and i had a young dp and we had to shoot a product shot and the guy just turns to me and says bro i've never done this yeah. like i have no idea how to shoot product and i realized that it's a generational thing there's a certain generation of people that's just never sat there with those acrylics oh, and lit those so they've just not done it days. right and um, not that it's a good or bad thing yeah. but it's just a complete change complete shift from stuff it's and a kind thinking, of a skill actually like is, cinematography is a lot about skill it's like a, it and skill and and application of it actually application of the thing that is how like you know how 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 light behaves how light behaves on a hair or la- how light behaves on something these are the kind of a skill which 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 you learn over over, over the time actually yeah. of, of working and you apply that thing it's, it's actually it's a brainless thing hmm. actually absolutely yeah, because course. you know like this is like how to make the hair shine and how to keep the face uh, not yeah. to get that light and you cut it in such a way and you do that thing even when you when the when the when the <laughs> person is turning how to cover that light mm. in that turning like all right. those like earlier when there was no way to clean up anything actually mm. i am from that generation yeah so you have to do everything yeah in camera in camera, camera. Yeah. yeah you yeah. cannot do, do any manipulation later only other than changing the like density of the thing or a color here and there you know that's it otherwise everything has to be c- c- like a shot so i know it very well but uh, the thing is it's quite boring actually mm-hmm. after <laughs> if you do the same thing again and again yeah. no after a point it gets uh, gets very very boring unless there is a story attached to it hmm. yeah. like unless there is a like i have done hair commercials which have which has a good story some kind of a story hmm. attached hmm. to it you know like um, i've done one with varma with for hmm. uh, parachute, parachute or something parachute. something so i've done that i enjoyed doing it there was some mm. kind little bit narrative. of a story some yeah. some narrative to it you know so it's just one hair mm. someone going that mm. that i don't enjoy mm. like if because right. then i'm i'm not i'm not because i'm a story i yeah. need to know what the story is i mm. keep asking what is the story what is this mm. what is that so if i don't get any if i don't have that that input thing, is not there then pull, it doesn't then it's just yeah. mm. no i want to add on what monan sir said see it's also that being a dop is all about moving images but there are a lot of us who've kind of started off by trying our hands on still cameras and when you start your hand on a still camera you eventually start learning these things how do you light a glass how do you light this how do you re- remove reflections how do you take out so these are things that if you've done that side then you start enjoying that process then it's not that we are all doing products every day it's very rare nowadays actually that we ourselves yeah. end up doing the products yeah, yeah. but when it comes i kind of enjoyed because now everybody's trying to push the barrier you know it's no more like there was just a piece of glass now there is another layer to it and some bubbles are going through yeah. it and some so it's become it's evolving but maybe like you said the newer generation has just kind of got used to these digital cameras where they 
the whole like i've done printing myself so i kind of understand that whole process the whole the whole gamut everything so i kind of enjoy it because probably i've done it and i've learned it today i guess they just come in straight and you you know i mean it's kind of given like when we came in i don't think there was a first lady ever Mm. That whole process started, I think, with a couple of us. Yeah. There was no, we used to do everything. Yeah. You yeah. know, an assistant cameraman is also say, bringing a, a piece of cloth and cleaning yeah, the table yeah. because the cameraman says, Arey, oh, that's sort of ganda. Hai. Yeah. Yeah. But now you say, Arey, oh, that's sort of ganda. Hai. So the guy who's standing next to the table will not clean it. He'll be yeah. setting. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole process has changed. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that is, it's a byproduct of how things have started going with the times. And yeah. people are no, evolving with the times. A, I used to have a kit, like uh, earlier, long ago. I had a box of things like cleaning, me because you never get any kind of cleaning like uh, microfiber cloth yeah, and yeah, all. Yeah. That was not available that shamoy. time in the early 2000s. <laughs> you know, no? So <laughs> I had a kit of all those stuff. So you you only do the thing. You only otherwise they come with the malmal or tissue paper or things like that. So, so when you do a product product, you, so I used to carry that thing. Product kit. You yeah, product kit. Yeah. Like it's my my kit actually. Yeah. So like so that everything is like uh, correct, you know. Because now things have changed, totally changed. Completely. I don't know yeah. when was the last time any of you ever carried your own filters. I mean, now it's yeah. just something you just yeah. order filters yeah, and it comes. comes. Otherwise, yeah. it was comes. always like exactly. there was yeah. a bag of filters, there was yeah. a glass of filters. Shoot my, <laughs> my, 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 my trunk. He goes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he goes first and his car, there is a car behind the <laughs> filters. <laughs> No, I mean, of course, there's been a lot of change. I mean, starting out with obviously celluloid, we're not even going to get into that. Celluloid to digital, we've all seen that. Uh, at first, we were all, I mean, I know with Monan, we had this long, I was like holding on to that 35, you know, till the last day, till I have to let it go. And I think we've seen all of that. Then the change just happened like that. It was a paradigm shift. And now we never think about it. We just shoot it, you know. And I think AI is the next thing, really, is that, you know, at what point do we go from analog actually shooting that glass, digital to 3D, VFX, to actually just text typing the damn commercial and it just comes out, it turns out. So where, what are your takes on AI? And, and obviously, you know, this is a very cliched question, but I think it has real depth for what's going to happen to all of us, directors, cinematographers, you know. What's your take? Is, is it something you think is going to be an ally when we're working? Is it going to be something that just replaces your job? Where do you see things? Uh, anyone can take it, really. I can start off. See, I feel it is definitely... I, I'm, I'm kind of following AI quite closely. And uh, I think it starts off as an ally. And it is promising a lot of things. And eventually, it is probably going to be maybe the end of cinematography as we know it. It could be. I, w I, I would say that probably in five years... It'll be really tough to actually probably have even the studio and things. Yeah. What AI can't do is it can't recreate emotion. You'll always have people who are needed to kind of give the prompt. I might then at that point of time, five years from now, be saying, create a table, a light that is at 90 degree or 80 degree, whatever the terms that you want to feed in the prompt. It, we might be ending towards that kind of a you know, shift as opposed to actually knowing how a light is behaving because it's very simple to correct a shadow in AI. You, you just add a prompt, you remove the prompt and say add darker shadow. What we've learned over all our years, you know, each of us is unique because of the way we have studied light, the way light is interacting and the way we've adapted to what it means to us. Mm. That is something that the AI is anyway going to learn. So when we all start off experimenting, it will be our ally. But eventually, I mean, I'm I, from my computer, he's doing from his computer, he's doing from his computer, he's going, he's going to be learning from everybody. Right. So eventually, I feel there may be a time where you're just going to be a prompt master, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't feel it's going to replace, I personally feel that it will never replace us. If at all anything, then it will probably aid us in, yeah, getting things done faster. It's like, like, it's also already happening now where... You know, if there is, we used to, earlier we used to like, for to cut each light from each corner, we used to put up like a, you know, like hundreds of flags going around every, just to cut a light. But nowadays, I, I simply told my assistant that, you know, how long will it take to do that, to cut that light from there? And yeah. he says that, oh, it'll take about uh, five minutes. I said, I can do it in five seconds, just take it out. We don't have the time. We don't have the time to do it. Let's just go off. Because it will, it will aid us in, I think, I mean, it can go both ways. But it will definitely aid, aid, aid us in making our image better. Uh, meaning that's what I feel. I, th I don't think, I I think it, will, it will relocate uh, yeah. the cinematographer somewhere else actually. 
That's exactly I think that's what, what I would what also I say. Yeah. Because the way, because it's already happening, like it, it's been happening for some time actually. When once it's shifted from film to digital, you know, it's already there. You can see that thing, you know, how it is. Like it's not the way like we used to be earlier actually. When you do in film, it used to be like everything is under control of the cinematographer. Right. The, 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 the person looking through the camera. So when the digital came, it already started shifting actually so many things. And now like we take like you take even like many people like I heard like many people take very flat image then take it to the the yeah. DI, DI suite and they started uh, they, they play around with that thing there actually. So that was not there before whatever you source and that's it actually that's right. a, that's a final thing. Now with AI it is going to be like that I think the cinematographer will be relocated somewhere else actually so the whole thing that is what I feel. But you definitely need uh, a kind of a human thing actually like oh, to create an image say like a will do do the image so you need the cinema like uh, a, uh, the mind a human like an mind operator actually. kind of almost huh? like an operator and the, the aesthetics yeah. and uh, everything the human it's, it's it is it is required but in a different uh, way i wonder what is going to happen to accidents because that's where so much of the good work happens on set you yeah. know you're doing something you're panning a light and suddenly you're like oh, no, no, stop 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 that's beautiful Happy but accidents. all that stuff is not going to come from prompts. That stuff just is so organic. Suddenly when light is hitting a surface and bouncing off in some completely unexpected manner. And I think that is where the human touch comes in. And that is such a large part of right. what we do as well, you know. Uh, hopefully, and the, and the uniqueness of images, right? Because if yeah. AI is just taking from a bank of common images, how it's do you get? How do you make a unique image? Because it's essentially every sunset is sort of an amalgamation of all sunsets, right? So ten people uh, do it, then by the eleventh, you'll realize that actually this is just becoming the same, and then you go back to people. Hopefully, exactly. I then, think the people is what yeah. gives it that uniqueness. Yeah. You need the people. Actually, yeah. that human brain is actually yeah. the aesthetics. So you, no, you he, is definitely required. Actually, yeah. like to create a certain kind of an image. But how how do you feel, I mean, just taking this forward a little bit or maybe to another sort of space, you know, year, a few years ago, Chris Doyle had this big problem with the Oscars, if you remember, because, you know, there was an, Ang, I think it was an Ang Lee film that was essentially shot all on green and the cinematographer got a, uh, got a mm. an Oscar for yeah. it. Yeah. Now, it was essentially a green screen film. Uh, there was, the cinematography was bare, bare bones. It was mainly lit by the 3D guys. Yeah. So I'm just curious about how you feel personally about this whole, you know, we're all going into this now, volume stages, Unreal Engine. Essentially, the physical world in a very short period of time is disappearing from the shoot, like the real world. Like less and less are you going to, we still build here, we still have sets and all, but it's done. Like most people are just shooting green screen. You see it live, it's all happening in real time. So my question is, how do you feel about a project that you would shoot as a DOP, which is 95% green screen, and it's the environment, the mood, the atmosphere is being lit by 3D guys. I mean, just to, just to, if you've ever thought about that. But at this point, it's not majority. To be honest with you, um, been following virtual production and AI quite closely again, like everyone, because we have to. Uh, during COVID, it did become a conversation. It's nowhere close to being affordable enough for the majority to be shooting on virtual production screens because the LEDs that you need, the quality of the LEDs, the size of the volume, all of that stuff is actually very expensive. And pure green screen is again only your Marvel films and stuff like that. So I, I don't think we are still there yet in the technology because right now AI at this point, like I've been using Mid Journey to give very specific prompts to show the PD and the director what's on my mind. Like a, like a painting or a photographer's image won't uh, help you get very specific with the, the, the frame size, the number of bags the person's holding, the color palette, the lighting, so on and so forth. With uh, COVID going away, you're actually seeing a lot of virtual production studios just propped up and not doing mm -hmm. as much work. Because the way it looks like, it looks like they're really pushing the volume stage in the West, like a big, big time. So no in terms of, though. no, actually from a director's point of view, producers are very excited about green screen. Right. They don't have to pay for locations. For them, it, it, the minute this thing becomes affordable, and I, I'm all, I always fear this idea of it's not affordable yet, because I think we believe that at some yeah. point about uh, digital. Everything, everything. I think we said AI is not quite ready yet, and that was like six months ago. It's so algorithmic, the speed at which these things are, and it's in nobody's interest. It's only in data big data and tech interest to push human beings out of the picture because all the, as, as we said, it's all going back to data guys, right? They're making the money off of it. So uh, the question I guess would be that if you had to shoot and you start, 
imagine a, a scenario where 70% or 80% of what you shot was on green screen. Would you still be DOPs? Yeah, I yeah, think, I think you so. still I think so. you, you would continue. I think, I think we have control of the image. Yeah. What yeah. as long as you had control yes. of the image. I think you would. I think you would still be DPs. We would still be DPs. I think even if you shoot on on green screen or whatever, and then after that, when you when you go to the the 3D artists, they can also do. Everyone can do it to a certain level, but if we are going to be shooting, what are we going to shoot? Shoot on green screen. The way we light it. Right. The the way. What what is our vision for the film in terms of lighting and stuff like that? Mm. They have to know that, right? Right. So even though for the, like for Ang Lee's film, mm. for that I'm sure that the cinematographer went in that the three D artists were not just doing it themselves. Right. Even if it was shot on green screen, Ang Lee like the mm. uh, the, the cinematographer did go in and say that okay, no, this is not this is not right. Mm. This is not right. Mm. Like like on a on a certain uh, on a, on a po podcast on a Deakins podcast recently uh, that I heard, they were saying that. The VFX artists didn't know how to, um, like the the bokers that were created, the out of focus elements that were there at the back, they were not true to the way it is on camera. So uh, James and uh, Roger kept telling them that okay, this is wrong. They didn't do it right. So then they just got a mat of it, and then they corrected it in DI. Mm. So it has, but it it has to there has to be someone who has to tell them okay, this is the way this lens would behave. Not that. Right. I think later on maybe you can feed a couple of prompts into the computer, say that okay, I'm using this particular lens, I'm using this particular uh, magnification or whatever, and that's how it'll. Yeah, the bokehs are just created just like that. But there has to be someone from this side going in, saying that this is what's going to see, be done. See, so, filmmaking is all about thoughts, right? So you can't take away the thought of a DP. Mm. So that's in, right. in essence, you will always be there as a DP because the collaborative process that makes a film a film, whether it's an ad yeah. film or a feature yeah. film, the right. collaborative process needs somebody who's been doing this all his life or who's learning this all his life. So we have now evolved, whether it is to aid the narrative, whether it is to get a car commercial or a hair commercial, we've come in with a certain thought and that thought is always a very teamwork kind of a process and with the director feeding his input, we say, I feel this is how it should be and therefore the thought is cannot be negated. So irrespective of whatever is there in the world of AI also, like you said correctly and like I'm using the word prompt master, but the point is we are going to be probably, you said shifted to another part of the mm, process. process. Maybe we are not yeah. going to be sitting behind a camera anymore, right. but we are still going to be giving our thoughts very valid points to make it look the way it is intended to look for that project with that director and his vision. I mean, even on a film, you know, I did a film uh, recently, a feature, and there was a lot of VFX on it. Eventually, it all came to the DI suite. And any of the compositing, whether you're looking, and eventually it's on the DP to turn around and say, no, it's not sitting properly. And, you know, why is it not yeah. sitting? The fall off, all of that stuff. Even somebody has to marry the image because mm -hmm. they're working in a silo and coming back. And the experience is actually with the DP of what what the lens fall off will be, what is the depth, look at that, sharpness, all of that, you know, right. so that the image marries at the end of the day, which is what I'm guessing even on Ang Lee's no, film, you know, no, at the end know, of the day. I a, sorry, I'm sorry, yeah. I had a bad experience with green screen, you know, just to be like, you know, because the thing is that, see, it was supposed to be everything on green screen, right? So what I've been asked, I was asking for like for a long time that, you know, what are the kind of background we'll, we'll be developing on, you know, finally, right? Based on that, I can create the lighting, right? If it's, I mean, it just, we don't just light up the whole space, right? In a way, green screen is part, but you know, it has to match with it, right? So eventually it was supposed to be unreal, but it didn't, it became like with, first it was unreal with LED screen, and then it was no LED, then it became normally just a green screen. I was supposed to be, you know, getting a prompt on my camera to see what kind of composition we'll get with the thing. But eventually I was shooting blindly on the green screen and it was like a, and I knew it was going to be a disaster. So it's like very important that, in that kind of space where, you know, uh, the director, the DP, as well as the VFX supervisor come, come on board b way before. I mean, they were way before, but, you know, you just can't, like, shoot blindly on a green screen. So it has to be, like, you know, some kind of matching has to be way before the shoot. I mean, you cannot do something, you know, after you finish your shoot and then you think, oh, you know, in the VFX, we'll create this, create that. So that kind of becomes very, because, you know, you, in that you're creating all your space also, right? You're creating yeah. your trees and all, and that, that, you know, a DP will not have a control on that, like, you know, what kind of fall off you want to have because yeah. if, you, if, you, if you tell them it's not matching or it's not looking real, the thing is that tech, the, tech, the person out there has to do it, right? I mean, as a DP, I can tell you, okay, this is not going to match. It's not matching. It's like how you said, you know, it's not matching, but there has to be a solution for this. Right now, I feel that, I mean, 
if you ask me, yes, if it's a green screen job, I better have a, like a very thorough VFX person who has done it before. Yeah. Right? I'm not just like, you know, it's, let's go ahead and we'll do it, we'll figure out in the post. That's the worst thing to do. So like off camera, we were joking that how, you know, these days directors don't even call the DPs for grade anymore, you yeah. know, sometimes it, it, it's come down to that situation. Um, but but I was pleasantly surprised. I was doing this promo for Aranyak. So we had the bolt, we had green screen. Uh, but there was a mood board earlier saying that this is what the vibe should be. And then I got booked. Three days, got paid for each day as a DP to come into the VFX studio and do lighting for three days. So I got to light up everything. I got to select what trees I wanted. So I was doing my compositions. So I mean, when you have that much of uh, freedom, then it kind of really changes the game because otherwise you're just left in the hands of the creativity of the VFX team and you don't know sometimes what that is. So it'll come into a grading suite, but even in that grading suite, you're mainly just like pushing and pulling colors, but not direction of light, uh, you know, because when you were shooting, you knew the moon was there and that was supposed to be behind the head and that was the backlight. So those are the kind of things that, you know, are not lost in translation. So hopefully if this process... Uh, becomes very popular, I think, as DPs, we should be putting our foot forward yeah. to get involved in some level of pre-production so that we know before shooting this is what it is and after shoot that we get to pick and choose the kind of colors and the light that interacts with the images that are already being yeah, shot. And you're know, not usually, fighting each other, yeah, but, but going hand No, but that, 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 actually that's scan. a given thing, no? So you like, yeah. otherwise how can... if, if You'll you be surprised if, say, it's like, not if, given. if you don't know what is going to be the frame, the final frame, yeah. then how will how you able to, be yeah. able to light up? Yeah, you 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 are seen, because you are seen. You are you are imagining it's going to be like that. I think these days, I think the image, the 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 what the background plate or whatever it is going to be is there generated before only. Actually. That is ideal, correct? Yeah. I so mean, no question, otherwise, it's, yeah, otherwise, yeah. like how will you how can you light up? Yeah. How can you light up the green screen? Yeah. Exactly you were saying that. Uh, yeah. yeah that so I used to do compositing and animation before. So I've been on both sides. So right. I. I I mean, I love shooting all these VFX and uh, I work with this director, Avnish, a lot. And he's, mad, you know, Avnish, no, he's mad about all these. And I have so much fun doing it. Even in my series, I have a lot of these VFX scenes. And I think what you give from here, when I'm sitting there, what, I was always waiting for the DOP to give me something in terms of uh, what the background is or yeah. what it is. Or I find clues in what is shot. Correct, yeah. Because most of the time I feel we leave, we as DOPs, we leave clues in the shot itself of the light coming from a yeah. certain angle. Yeah. And you as a guy who is compositing it, it's it's kind of taking it from there and uh, from the what the DOP has given you and creating your whatever background. And, and at that time when, when I was doing it like what, 14, 13, 14 years back. There was no so much of digitally created mm. images. A lot of time you end up matte painting, like Sammy mm. would paint yeah. something and you would put it inside. They all, if you look at it, most of the work, I'm really proud of what that time was because the light fall off, everything was right. The online art, the people who were behind it, they would actually understand it from the shot of whatever Shah Rukh Khan is standing in front. He has a light falling like this. He will derive from that. Mm. That was one generation of people who were yeah. there, like yeah. all those boys. I mean, I love shooting chroma. I mean, what we shot also yeah. was fully chroma, yeah. and I, I enjoyed doing it. You can create. You can you can actually create. So basically, I, I'm just. So what I'm saying is essentially what it's sounding like is now the DOP sort of scope of work has gotten kind of fragmented, and pieces of it has gone to other departments, other. And I guess in the West, there's still a workflow because there's a certain expectation of how the final green screen looks. And as a DOP, if you come on a, on a film, on a feature, or on a commercial, and you don't have a link with the VFX guy, or you have a director who's incompetent, who hasn't done this, it looks like you've made a terrible ad. Mm. You just look like a terrible yeah. DP. Why did they shoot it like that? It's almost like the liability comes onto you, right? So I think this is a very interesting time where it's almost like it seems like DOPs almost have to take charge of all the other HODs that might affect that image. And, and that extends also, I think, to the aspect ratio. For example, I'm just thinking about aspect ratio, right? Back in the day, you frame, you know where your frame lines are, that's your frame. Now it's going to get hacked, it's going to yeah. become a 1-1, one, one, it's going to become a 9 by 16, it's going to be all kinds of stuff. Now you've decided to shoot, you know, something very long, it's tracking, it's going left to right. Someone just puts a 9 by 16 in there. How do you deal with aspect ratios? How do you deal with reframing when, I, when you see that? I generally data? now, before I get into any commercial... Or when I did, before getting onto set, let's put it that way, I first asked that, what are we framing for? Are we framing for a 9 by 16 or are we framing for a... Actually, not even before getting on set, just the first meeting with the director, mm -hmm. once we've done the thing. And 
See, to be fair, that is what is getting the client the money. Right. Right. So, so you you can't go around saying that oh you know I'm not going to shoot nine by sixteen. Right. But if it's, because if you are a essentially you are a photographer, you are like a motion picture photographer. But you can frame. You have to make the frame look like look good. So whether it's nine by sixteen, but you have to ask them first. So I ask them first. Ki what is it? Or are you going to be? Are you going to put? Like we can't do a two, three, five image and then suddenly go to a nine by sixteen. You know. So are you parallelly framing with multiple aspect ratios on set? Sometimes. How does it work? Sometimes I do. Conversation because uh, there has to be one master and then the other adapts, or there are two masters. So if if it's an adapt, usually then you don't have to be worried about it too much because they kind of just get what they get from it. Uh, but if both are equally important, then it's an it's a foot down saying that we have to reshoot it twice. Mm. So you try to shoot open gate as much as possible. Uh, keep it sixteen is to nine so that you can get a one is to one. But if you need to go narrower than that, you have to tell the first AD. This is a separate shot. Most of the time, it's the the art director gets the most pissed with with nine is to sixteen because you can't see a damn set anymore. Right. You know, most of the time. So in prep, it's very important to understand how many shots need to be reshot, uh, making sure that as DP, you tell the first AD that hey, this can be done, cannot be done. So this has to be reshot. So you plan for it. And right now, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. At some point, it's going to get more important than TVCs because I think it's already uh, the, more the, the important. The demise of the TVC. This is the demise of composition as well. <laughs> no, yeah, it is, yeah, it is course, already more important. Yeah. I can tell you that. Yeah. Like the TVC now still gets more budget. I don't understand why. When digital is now the hero, uh, we're we're going to be talking about a product. You walk out and you get an ad about it. I mean, exactly. Now what's better versus yeah. some TV switched on, some Tata Sky? Who knows who's watching? What is happening with Sports. that? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Sports. No one yeah, has IPL on the. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. You know, so it's better to rewire your brain to not get annoyed because in the beginning it gets really annoyed when you get that yeah. and you have to shoot nine to sixteen and you're like, what the hell is happening? But then you have to get used to it because now that is the future. Uh, just hopefully it doesn't happen to cinema. That's that's when we'll get really pissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so but right now, in advertising, it's okay. We'll give a little bit of a leash. I've done. So usually, also. what what I do is sometimes if they, if they say that the nine by sixteen is the norm, that you have to shoot whatever happens if the client says that no, we have to do this TVC. So we are going to do, but we have to do a nine by sixteen. Then I try and push the production to get two cameras. And again, it's also because of time. You know, you can't, uh, uh, especially now because of the you know budgets have been crunched. Like everything, everything has been crunched. So you, are, you don't have that much time to shoot. You don't have so you would rather shoot with one camera, which is your, which is doing your TVC like the way you would like it. Or and and then you have a nine by sixteen camera also, which you also have to frame it properly for nine by sixteen. Mm. So I've done like I've had to have two cameras rolling at the same time. The only thing that happens is that. You have to like you have to tell the AD and stuff that okay this is going to take a little bit more time, right? But at least your performance won't be affected. You know, your if it's a performance oriented film or if it's a performance something like that, then you at least getting it like like a two camera setup now at least oh. ex except that the second camera is not shooting like this, doing like vertical this. instead <laughs> and so that. Yeah, I have also done like that because someone told me Karthik has done it. So I'm like, okay, again, if Karthik has done it, he has thought about it. No, it's so actually a, it's a great solution. I didn't yeah, think so about I, it. I, I, I would that. never even give that much thought to that other format, sadly. But I guess that is required now because the balance of those formats is becoming more. There and are more certain important. brands who are very like, yeah. like they want this right. one is to one and nine. Day, but like I yeah, I, like I've shot. I just shot a, a Facebook commercial recently, which we were framing only for nine sixteen. Right. Because that was going to be the main main thing that will go out. That is what was required as a deliverable. Hmm. But are you not going to frame for the the hmm. bigger format? <laughs> right. Of course you are. So you are you, in that one. Then we didn't have the luxury of doing two cameras. But it is that there are you can there are, you can get away with it. But this nine by sixteen is good fun to shoot. I did yeah. that that with Varma. I did one of those the ten second yeah, Facebook yeah, 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 yeah. ones. No, those thumb stoppers. It was so much fun because we just had to do vertical, yeah. and suddenly it felt like those still camera yeah. photography. Now <laughs> suddenly you you yeah. shoot, Height. and you can do a yeah. lot of stuff because you have two yeah, places yeah. which we have not explored yeah. only. It's like I say that like in a, in a two three five frame, like in a two three five frame, I always say that you can have two stories happening at the same time. You can have like a foreground story happening as well as a background story. I guess when you go nine by sixteen, you can have three. Top like, like, you know, you can have things happening. You know, so it's but not. But the weird thing is, we are so used to the barrel distortion on the sides because spherical lenses. 
you know, the, the top and bottom usually gets cropped off in the sensor. So you have the distortion inside. The moment you flip it, so the top and the bottom, having that distortion just starts becoming a little weird uh, that you got to yeah. get used but to. That, for yeah. me, it was now, more like Nowadays, the cameras FNR. are 8K and all, yeah? Like, yeah. you just zoom in, no? Yeah. Like, uh, because, yeah. like, uh, what is it going to be? Finally, it's going to come on a, or, or on a, a mobile phone. Mobile, yeah. mobile phone. Yeah. And what, how much you need, actually? Yeah. Yeah. I think it, yeah. Yeah. So, do you, do you think generally like now when you get asked to do jobs, because you guys have all been doing things for a while, do you feel like there's a change in the cinematic language and commercials like what you're being asked to do? For example, I see a lot of very in-your-face kind of visuals, very strong LED colored lights, things like that, you know, really tweaked grades. Um, do you feel like there's a shift and do you feel like there's an expectation for you to do, especially in certain genres, like, oh, you have to do this kind of thing? Or do you feel like you just do your thing and it's sort of... I'm just, I'm just I mean, wondering. yeah, every every single director's note I get has a close-up with a 16 mil. Exactly. It has a three-axis head. It's like standard. Exactly. standard. Everyone's doing the same thing and it's really getting annoying. Right. But like, I guess the start of where the, the heavy uh, lighting in color came was, was because Instagram gave you that filter option. So exactly. everyone was putting a filter on their sandwich, on their toe, exactly. on their sky, on everything. So generally, people's drift towards seeing more colorful, more graded or filtered images happen in their pocket. The moment the smartphone came and you could just drop a filter on your images, then when you saw a cleaner image, you probably didn't really relate to it much. So I think in general, over time, grades have gotten way heavier because also it's just so in your hand that everyone's just constantly filtering. You know, also, the trend keeps changing, no? Yeah, it's it's comes and yeah. goes. I don't like when I was assisting him and Chaturvedi, we used to do wide uh, lens for some comical mm. uh, kind mm. of stuff. Then that died off, then it became 50mm, 75mm, low depth of field. Then uh, remember Tapan, <laughs> uh, our starting days used to be that only low contrast. Then it became now wide lens and yeah. this. Now it has gone down also. I, f I feel it just keeps it's coming cyclical. in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's like, it's like, like clothes. clothes. Fashion. Yeah. Yeah. Fashion. I, I yeah. haven't had a, I, mean, I don't see anything different. I don't know, it's this, this, this is the story. That's what it is. That's what you got to do. I think it if depends it needs on what color, you were hired to do. And yeah. what I think kind it's also what people is. know you to do, right? Exactly. Like, I think this guy is responsible for a lot of this. <laughs> you look. I shoot what I get. I get a deck. <laughs> and now you get only those decks. But I see that yeah. a lot. Yeah. Anything that's remotely fashion all has wide lenses. It all is shot in a very similar way. Can't tell the director. Can't tell yeah. the DOP. It literally looks like an Instagram yeah. 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 job. And, and yeah. I guess that is what's happening is that initially commercials were like sort of like the sort of sad cousin of the feature, right? That was always the reference point, the feature. Yeah. And now I don't think it is anymore. I think it's yeah. Instagram. I think it's reels. Yeah. I think it's it's stuff that's online that a commercial really has to deal with visually. Yeah. So um, actually, in fact, I think even in commercials now, it's there's a trend, not trend. I would say it's, it's a, there's a hard cut now that it's only digital hmm. or it's only, only TV. You know, it's only for TV or only for like TVC is become TVC is now there, but with that there are these many things happening. So I think there is a like how you have in features you have like your commercial and indie, you have things mm -hmm. happening in in your uh, TVCs also where now I can't say TVCs, mm -hmm. I say TVC or DVC, I don't know. DVC. But oh, yeah. <laughs> things are happening DVC. where you have a certain thing that people are saying. I get calls saying that you know it is only a digital commercial. Mm -hmm. It is not a TVC. Is that a way to bring your money down, essentially? Yeah. Um, for, uh, yeah. for digital, we use <laughs> only one hand. Yes. Sometimes, hand yes. Is <laughs> Sometimes yes. But depends. So when they tell me it's a digital, uh, it's a digital ad, I say, okay, how many days are you looking at? Meaning, what is your? Let me tell me how. What is your story first? Right. Let's decide then. No, after that. I think to yeah. summarize it, no, it's all like how Rubai said. No, it is a. It is a trend and I mm. think the trend is actually more to do with how our attention span is getting shorter, shorter and shorter yeah. and shorter. The need for a wide lens or a sudden burst of color or a mm. yellow is because people will now skip your ad within five seconds if right. it is not catching yeah. you. Right. So I think a lot of this input has also come from some probably a creative person or a director or mm. somebody down the whole pipeline or the workflow who's figured that you know, if I start a movie with a shot of a nice village, like one mm. of his shots where, you know, the, mm. you're seeing Kashmir Ki Vadia and there's a four second track. Finished. It's gone. Today it's gone. It's over. In, in that four seconds, they'll have eight cuts today, mm. which is maybe making you stop and say, oh, okay, let me watch the ad. I think that is also a driving force as to why imagery is changing. But in essence, as DPs, we are all going to have to adapt to what is the need of the hour. Mm. 
because that is always been there with yeah. co with commercial yeah. the commercial is always there from the beginning itself because the earlier commercial in the 90s in the 80s and 90s commercials used to look in a certain way mm. because the film the film had a peculiar look and mm. the commercial used to look much more glossy mm. Mm. because when it comes on a television actually you should you should hold mm. the, the visual yeah. thing is like a very glossy and very good looking images and uh, later the film people started adapting that 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 language that commercial language so the so the tv again the advertising thing they had to change uh, the way of looking the, the imagery you know so the it is a constant thing actually because from the clutter suddenly you to the striking image mm. you know is always been there with with mm. the, with the advertising because ad basically advertising is like that actually you mm. know like okay. a short span like you to get the attention and yeah. to remember the 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 product mm. so it has always been there and now it's become like now so many things like instagram and this thing and other things like a, that keep keep change because it it has to evolve uh, like uh, keep evolving no yeah. according to the time yeah. like i was i was called um like i did a i did a black and white commercial uh, series but one or two commercials recently but when i was approached for a black and white commercial i just jumped at it Hmm. I was like, this is not winning. I'm not never going to probably get something like this. So yeah. I got it. I, I shot it. But I have been seeing that there have been lots of commercials now that are being made in black and white. Yeah. Earlier, when we started off, black and white was like, we would like, why would you even shoot black right. and white? You know, the client would never pay for a black and white because in their own right, it is correct. Saying, I am paying for color. <laughs> saying, why would I say where is the color? It's like <laughs> doing the But letterbox thing. There was also thing. this whole yeah, yeah. thing. Two, three, five, much shoot. Color. I used to love shooting two, three. I think I personally love shooting two, yeah. three, five. Yeah. But it would always be that the client is saying, "Ki upar ka color aur niche ka color." Where is that? And what when I hear this real estate? <laughs> oh, First time I heard it, I, I was like, "What?" If if it comes on a like a one of those news channels which have like so many tickers at the bottom, that's anyways it's squeezed. So. ट्रीम so that's like something which i make it very clear i mean it's like i treat also the also for me the commercial which i get also very quite narrative oriented mm. so i can get away with it you know also even mixed format i love mixed format like which is also fashion you know you 4 to 3 then put anamorphic mm. yeah 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 i mean it's but yeah but then i think like yeah the rotating 360 degrees is like really annoying that's true but but I it's uh, <laughs> it, it's annoying that these days whether it's yeah. the the agency or ott platforms yeah they 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 force you to shoot a certain aspect ratio these days like i mean with netflix and amazon it's 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 like a it's like a hey try and do it because they don't want to get too involved in the creative process but most of the time now you get the aspect ratio and they and you be like you have to make it work with this at least with the digital films and even when you are sitting the with the guys at netflix or amazon because they know now smartphone mm. the smartphone actual aspect ratio is almost two to one for almost all uh, yeah. devices so they kind of push you to shoot two to one so that when people watch it on their devices they get to see everything full screen yeah screen real estate uh so you know it it's 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 it used to be more of a creative choice but right now it's become more of a practical choice so i guess that has been like a bit of a shift uh, but if you really want to push for an aspect ratio then it comes You no know, often i'm being told oh celebrity call this guy <laughs> beauty call no i i, I just wonder if you have to actively break it or do you actively sort of embrace it and say okay cool i am the celebrity person this was 2014 and there was really no women on the horizon in terms of and uh, the first thing the producer said is will she be able to handle the pressure and will she not get tired on set earlier when there was no way to clean up anything it's like i am from that generation so you have to do everything in camera, in camera. camera. Yeah. you know you can't push in every aspect just push the one at one thing at a time like you know don't try to like get into everything just one element of something you want to push for now i've come to realize that you know any story can be shot whether you have a light or not no yeah. like it's just the look will change make five friends in different genres as advertising directors yeah that's what i do i shot with certain dops who were established when i was starting out and i didn't have the balls to say anything because the guy would just throw a fit or he'd say no 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 i'm not doing it there's a bit of power play there's no consistent work coming to anybody anyone's phone can just Stop ringing any day. So either tell yourself that just milk whatever you can, or just treat it like a job. Sometimes I faced a lot of rejections. There was a period of time for three years where I got no work. 